Good morning, morning, millennials, millennials. and welcome back to The Toast. Happy Tuesday. That feels like a Monday, so like it feels like a little dreadful, but like it's really not. When you stop to think about it, it's not so dreadful. When you stop to think about it, we're like 30% through the work week. Through the work week. Through the work week. I think we're 20%. Well, I guess 10% from today already. Right. 30%. 30%. Wow, look at that, Turdy. I crunched the numbers, and they're not looking half bad. They're not so bad. It's been a minute since we've been here. I uh, hope everyone had an amazing weekend. We did. Fun friends, family, eras. And that's really all you can ask for from a weekend. Fun friend, family, era. It's so true. We were all in the city this weekend because of eras. Because yeah. of Taylor. Taylor, like, did kind of ruin any potential Memorial Day weekend plans. And, like, I wasn't, I'm not going to lie. Like, in the beginning, like, I was feeling a little bitter. You know, I can't take a trip. Right. But I actually ended up love, loving being home for the long weekend. The city was like kind of empty and it just felt, I kept thinking, it was still like pretty, it wasn't totally empty. Like some weekends, holiday weekends, it's for, for like abandoned. Yeah. But it was like pretty, pretty fine. And I was thinking like, I wish the city was always like this, you know, just like a normal amount of people on the street, not You wish empty. for happiness like this forever? Literally. That's how I felt Friday night at Eras. Like I really wished for happiness like this forever. Well, I want to hear... Greatest Showman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to hear all about eras. Eras. Well, I was always planning on going Saturday night. Like, I had tickets with a... uh, Well, I didn't have tickets. A brand offered me, Margo and Ben, seats in their suite. So, like, I always knew I was going. And I was going to try and get tickets the other nights. But, like, I was pretty content. I have been already in Nashville. I was pretty content just going Saturday. And then Friday day, you and I were just, like, hanging out with Rold and the fam. And and I was checking on tickets. You and Snitch were on Ticket Patrol. We were just checking. And then we left your house at like four o'clock, maybe three thirty. And you guys, like you and mom, were like really encouraging that we go. And I was like, all right. I mean, like if you guys are saying it, like maybe we should. I think sometimes, you know, I we get a little fanatical, me and Margo, with our obsessions, and like you guys always reel us back in. But you yeah. were encouraging it, so I was like, oh, if Jax is saying and mom is saying, like I should definitely go. So I'm walking home from your apart from your apartment, refreshing StubHub. And at like four thirty, I'm like, Margo, like just get dressed. Like we're gonna go. We are going to go. And as I'm doing my makeup, these tickets pop up on StubHub. We had been watching them drop slowly. And at first, like many months ago, we wanted to sit on the floor. But a lot of the footage that I've seen from the show is like, if you're on the floor and you're not in the first three rows, like you really can't see anything. And even if you're in the first three rows, the stage is so big. She spends like 10% of the time in front of you and then the other 90% away. So I'm like, I think maybe the hack here is lower bowl. And we really wanted first row lower bowl tickets, but my God, the guy on StubHub like would not drop the tickets. He had so many tickets in the first row for like six grand. I'm like, oh, oh this guy's nuts. So we bought a few rows back. They were definitely like double face value but we thought we got a good deal because he had eventually dropped them we bought the tickets at 4 30 as we were getting dressed so we ran we got dressed we literally didn't look like special or amazing we just like looked normal but whatever um and we got to the stadium at like 6 30 we took an uber like it wasn't really crazy planned and we got there the whole first row was empty the guy never sold the tickets we were so mad and we asked could the secu- you take those seats we asked the security guard like could we sit there and he was like no I'm like, okay. And why'd you ask? It was actually a conversation between me and Margot. Like, do we ask or not ask? And I think it's, you know, Margot wanted to ask. I wanted to not ask. Margot ended up asking and he said no. And I was like, damn, we shouldn't have asked. And then five minutes later, he was like, go. I think he saw us having like the best time. We literally had the whole first row to ourselves. It was so stupid oh, that no one. I didn't know that. It was so know. stupid that no one was sitting there. Yeah. But well, I was for asking. Exactly. Yeah. And okay. then I and, didn't know that he eventually let you sit there. Yeah. And this was literally in like the second era. So we were literally there the whole show. And then I was like, you know what? I'm glad we asked because he uh, thought, you know, respected us as being rule followers, respecting his authority. And then he ended up giving our seats to this little girl. So she got an upgrade. We got an upgrade. It was all good and fun. Um, he really should have given like the front row seats to the little girl because she was so short. But whatever. I'm not complaining. We the whole first row. We were like running and dancing. And oh my God, did we have the time of our lives? Like it was the best Eras tour I've been to. One, because it was clearly like a special night. We got a lot of surprises. Of course, we got Ice Spice. We got amazing special songs. We got Getaway Car and Maroon. She also then, you know, brought out all of her dancers. They all sat down on the stage and she's like, I'm going to premiere my new music video for you. It's out at midnight, but we're all going to watch it together. So it was like a special night, you know? And it was, it was really just amazing. Like being there with Counts, like just, it was, I really can't put it into words. It was 
the best concert I've ever been to, the best Eras tour I've ever been to. And then it took a lot of pressure off the next night because we were in a suite and like technically it was like a work event. So we couldn't like be animals. So we were still, you know, vibing, but we weren't being like, we got it all out of our systems on Friday night. So I feel like I, I hacked it perfectly. We were even thinking of going Sunday, but at that point I was like, you know what? Let someone else go. We've, we've seen enough. And I was beat. Like yeah. I was not okay. Like three hours, it was basically a three hour workout. Jumping, dancing, I didn't sit. I sat in between eras while she was doing her outfit changes and there was like music playing. I needed, you know, the break. But I was up and Adam, George McFadden for the rest. Yeah. It was incredible. And then on the second night, we were able to get merch and I got the CD with the new song, even though like- Even though you s trashed it on the show last week, the yeah. idea of it. I'm j I have it as like a novelty. I'm never gonna listen to the song. I don't have a CD player or a car or like a computer with a CD-ROM, so. But like maybe one day you could sell it to a fellow Swifty. Yeah, that's- turn that's, that's definitely what I'm thinking, you know, yeah. keeping it in good condition. I was cracking up when you and Margaret were like posting the CD after everything you said last yeah. week on the show about the idea of the CD. No, one thing about me, like I'm like, I'm going to make fun of something and like still do it, you know? Yeah. Because that's just me. And you got merch. I got merch. I got We got you merch. Yeah, I got a t-shirt. I got a quarter zip, which feels appropriate if you've seen my comedy show. So true. And it was just a fabulous weekend. And then also like I was able to like sing my heart out Friday and Saturday night and then literally all day Friday and Sunday I was with you enrolled like yeah what more could you ask for in a balanced weekend it was such a balanced weekend we had so much fun I mean I didn't have the errors portion but it was really fun to be in the city it was gorgeous weather this it weekend was. like you couldn't ask for better and we just got to spend a lot of time outside Harry was having a blast we went out to brunch by we the went water to the park. we went to the park we were park early swirlies we were park early swirlies it was really fabulous like enriching balanced revitalizing like wholesome weekend. weekend wholesome weekend. weekend yeah yeah I wouldn't have done it any other way Jax yeah well I'm glad that it all worked out for you yeah and now that's it that's a wrap on the Eras tour tourney's version we'll see where else would you go I don't know Pittsburgh no it's close you would really go yeah I but would like, go but you didn't go to night three I in, didn't next uh in next backyard door. yeah no I didn't are you really considering it? Yeah, like I, I support whatever you do. If I have a free weekend and there's like a good destination, why not? Okay, you know. And so let's talk about all in all the secret songs that you've let's. procured for yourself. Yes, because in Nashville it was "Out of the Woods" and "15," which was amazing. Like I, they weren't even on my list, and I couldn't have asked for two better songs. And I really thought like I got, I got. Special treatment, you know? Then night one, you had Getaway Car and Maroon. Maroon. Uh, when she, and she brought Jack Antonoff out. Like, Friday night was like a special night. She treated yeah, it differently. I'm so did. glad I went. And then the Saturday night was... Holy Ground. Holy Ground. And then False God, which was okay. False God. Like, those... T the first of the three, Out of the Woods... 15 and Holy Ground? No, Out of the Woods. Getaway Car. Getaway Car and Holy, Holy Ground. Like, would have been on my top yeah. even maybe five. Let me tell you something, though. Like, a, a, I'm going to have, I have an, a bone to pick with Miss Taylor. She obviously kept choosing songs that had the word New York in it. Holy Ground is, like, all about the city. Um, False God, staring at the window like I'm not your favorite town. Maroon, it says New York. It's, like, all about New York. When I tell you at the concert, she's like, hey, Jersey. She kept, she never called us New York. And then she's saying, welcome to New York on the third night. She kept calling us Jersey. And like, we, me and Margaret were like in each other. And it was like, stop. It's a problem. I know. It's a problem that the New York Stadium is in New Jersey. But the New York Giants play there. The New York Jets play there. And like when a big artist comes to town, they play there. And then like their Instagram caption is like, East Rutherford, you were amazing. And it's, it's like, like, question mark? Who? Question mark. Who's East Rutherford? I don't know her. So I was, well, I appreciated the thought she put into the secret songs. Like, stop calling us New Jersey. But she's in New Jersey. But it's, like, would but it's like, the stadium for New Yorkers, too. I know, but if she got up there and said, like, hey, New York, people, she would be, like, trolled for not knowing where she is. No, and it's factually inaccurate. Like, there's yeah. no winning. I just wish she said, hey, I'm guys. sure it's frustrating for her, too. Why is there not, like, a state? What's the stadium? There's so many arenas in New York, but is there not a stadium? No. I guess that's why the New York Giants and the New York Jets Maybe play. Maybe like where the Buffalo Bills play. Right. I guess upstate. she would say New York. Then she and that would feel wrong too. <laughs> then she could finally say New York. Hmm. It was weird. Um, but so there was thought put into the secret songs. Like she, there always is. Yeah. But she re sometimes it's just like a, a song that feels good. But she referenced in maybe like four out of six of the secret songs this weekend, New York. Then the third night was the well, much dreaded Welcome to New York. Everyone was like, I'm not going the first night because she's obviously going to play Welcome to New York and I don't want to hear that. I just have to say, like, while I, I wouldn't have chosen it, Welcome to New York is a banger. Like, no, it's not. Mm. 
I feel like people who actually are not Taylor Swift fans like it more than Taylor Swift fans. Yeah, because it's like, I don't know, it's from that movie. Yeah, the uh, Dakota Johnson, How to Be Single. Yeah, and it was like part of the New York tourism commercial. So it's just like... Was it? Yeah, it's for the not fans. Oh, okay. Um, but I, I feel like if... And it's not even close to a song that I even like love. I, I could tolerate it. I feel like if you're in New York and she's here and she sings it and it's like a one-time only thing, like it, it probably is a nice moment. But, but we're in New Jersey. Makes True. you think. Yeah. Welcome to New Jersey. Mm-hmm. I missed it. I'm okay with it. She also then, then did Sing Clean, which is the first time she's repeated a song now. And of all the songs to repeat, like that's a really good one. I definitely, I was, I was having FOMO from that. Oh, were you? Yeah. You were having FOMO from one song. Yeah. Not enough to like, you know, get go. tickets and go. But it was a, a tough loss for the community. I just think you're not seeing what's in, directly in front of you. Which, which is, is the amazing songs I got. Unreal songs. No, I have literally. And you had Maroon because she knew that the songwriter was, that inspired the song was in the In stadium. the crowd, yeah. Because a lot of people do say that my recent banger, 100%, sounds a lot like Maroon. And let's keep in mind, 100% came out a full year before Maroon. And that's the thing about Taylor. She's inspired by others. She said it herself. So I'm honored to be a part of the creative process. Yeah. They do sound similar and we're not being crazy. Other people have said it too. Wait, we have spoken for so long without talking about why today's episode is so special. Because. Our interview. Yeah. Oh, I thought you forgot. No, no, I just, I, there's so many things that make any given episode special. So true. I just like an heiress tour. Yeah. I thought me, I didn't know if it was this or that, or like maybe something I did. I I forgot. Like, no, no. So if you're listening as a podcast or watching as a video, it's at the end of today's episode. We have a 30 minute interview with Brooke Eby, who is kind of the trifecta, if you will. She's a toaster. She's an advocate. And she's a TikToker. So last week I got tagged in this video like a thousand times. I'm like, oh my God, I'm blowing up. What's going on? (laughs) And not to make everything about me. And everyone was tagging me in this video of this beautiful young girl named Brooke Eby who makes videos about her terminal ALS diagnosis. And somebody had asked her if she had any sort of bucket list. you know, a wish list. Yeah, like things she wanted to do. And she had a bunch of different things. Taylor Swift was on there. And the toast was on going there. Going on the toast. Going was on one an of them. episode of the toast was like one of her major life goals. So we did it. We, we made were it like, happen. What if we just called Brooke up? And that's exactly what we did. I slid into her DMs on TikTok. We organized it. She came on the toast last week, right after we wrapped for the week. And it's at the end of today's episode. She's so funny. She talks a lot about her ALS journey and just like you know questions people like have for her that you might be wondering like how does somebody you know go to work you know things like that and then she fulfills her toast fantasies by giving us like a fast five hot take conversation about kardashians about scandal about succession she was really funny and she was really cute and pretty and it was just a really fun episode so it was at the and she was end, so toasty it was like it was so fun to talk to someone who like knows what we're about to say knows the lingo knows the lingo she was like getting to the lingo before we were yeah it was great so that's at the end of today's episode and it's really i think one of my favorite interviews ever yeah also at the, after the fast five shall be succession recap oh yeah because claudia and i both watched the finale and boy am i glad i did it was yeah. amazing yeah yeah there's a lot to it discuss. was so vindicating fulfilling for those of us who fucking hate those kids yeah and i couldn't have dreamed up a better ending for the show that hurt more people it was beautiful yeah it was but it was interesting you know what i'll get into it because i i do also have some mixed thoughts hmm. yeah but remember when the season premiered and we said, who do you think will will succeed? Like, who will take over? Who did we say? I forget who you said. But it was also not like, who do you think, but who do you want? Yeah. And I said Matson. Mm, I think. And you're not wrong. And I wasn't wrong. Yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> I wonder who you said. Probably something so dumb, like Marsha <laughs> or something. Like... <laughs> One thing about me, like, I do not understand succession. Like, the business stuff, like, I always have to go on Twitter afterwards and, like, see if I missed anything because so much of it goes over my head, so. But then you go on Twitter and you see people who are seriously mentally ill. Yeah. Like, crying over what they've They're seen. They're like, Kendall just deserves more. Like, it was Kendall so, deserves more. He's literally Kendall, a murderer. Kendall deserves nothing. He's literally a murderer. Yep. Literally one of the worst human beings on the face of the planet. Terrible businessman, terrible father, Wait, terrible husband. That's the thing. At its core. Terrible son. At his core, and why Logan like never handed over the business. Like he was the only one who was qualified, but he didn't have it. He was like kind of dumb. Like always making. You knew if Kendall said to do this, the right answer was it was that. Yeah. He was just he didn't have the brains for it. So really, none of them were deserving, equipped, or qualified. Or qualified. So 
the best man won, in my opinion. Yeah, the man who's always been there for the company, always been there for Logan. No, and the man who will admit, like, is really just a pawn. He's like, Matson was like, I need you, like, I want to put my finger up your ass and you're going to be my puppet. Yeah. And he's more, he's not scrupled. He'll say this, say that, just, he's perfect for that world. Yeah. So the right man won, in my opinion. Agreed. Okay, we'll talk, we'll about, talk about it at it. the end, even though we just talked about it. So let's dive in. Let's dive in. Any other Eras, Turdy's version thoughts? We're going to talk more Eras in the past Right, five, there's so. a bunch of story. Well, the first story. So if I forgot anything, I'll get to it. Great. So now, without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And today's episode is brought to you by the Kardashians on Hulu. You can watch the all-new season of the Kardashians. New episodes are dropping Thursdays only on Hulu. So the world's most famous matriarchy is back for the most intimate look yet inside the family empire. We know that there's a lot going down in the Kardashian universe, and we're finally going to get to hear from the ladies themselves. A lot of speculation on, you know, divorce, the whole Courtney Kim thing. Like, we don't really know what's going on. And the Kardashians are getting into it on their new season, season three of the Kardashians on Hulu. So they're talking entrepreneurship there's sibling rivalry there's newfound love there's family growth there's business motherhood and more we'll see each of the six women more up close and personal than ever as they can continue to evolve with what it means to be a kardashian we know you love them we love them the whole gangle the gangle of girlies is there there's chris courtney kim chloe kendall kylie i'm kind of in my kendall era these days i've been really what? like i know after the first episode from last week i really um i was feeling kendall Wow, I'm always in my Kylie era, especially as she was learning to drive stick. I'm always in my Chloe era. Always, yeah. always. But um, I really related to Kylie learning how to drive. Yeah. Um, so you don't miss the season three of The Kardashians. New episodes are dropping Thursdays only on Hulu. You can catch up now on all the seasons and the first episode, which premiered last week. The Kardashians, season three, new episodes are dropping Thursdays only on Hulu. You don't want to miss it. Today's episode is also brought to you by Caraway. Get a head start on spring cleaning with Caraway. Their thoughtfully designed sets and complimentary storage makes getting and staying organized easier than ever. You can now save 10% off the full suite of Caraway products from the internet famous cookware to their newly launched food storage set. Caraway's high quality ceramic coated kitchenware is free of PTFE like Teflon, lead, cadmium, and other toxic materials. Um, Jax, I know you're like a ride or die Caraway girly ride and ride. you've been kind of away from home. No, I've been struggling because since I've been here and now I'm going to be here for a few months, like I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get like Caraway pots and pans. Like it just seems excessive, but I've caved and I ordered another set because I actually find myself cooking less because it's like, oh, I don't want to make eggs. They're going to yeah, stick to the pan. so true. I need my caraway cookware. So I have the set. Um, I have the frying pan already and the rest of the things. I think they're being delivered today. I'm so excited. Like, it makes me cook more to use caraway because it's such a pleasant experience and the cleanup is so, so easy. easy. Their, their pot should be called the chili pot. Yeah. Because it's amazing for chili. So true. But maybe like a summer soup. Maybe a gazpacho I'll make this summer. A gazpacho? A gazpacho by well, the, caraway. The thing I like about caraway is like, yeah, there's all these great fancy things. But like, if you live with a Ben Soffer who will leave a pan out for months before he cleans it it's such a relief to like the seriously ben will leave it out all day and there's like stuck on cheese and you rinse it and it's so easy to clean it really makes the cleanup more realistically doable and it makes you not want to kill your husband which is always Saving a good marriages. thing visit carawayhome.com slash toast 10 to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10 percent off your next purchase the deal is exclusive for our listeners so visit carawayhome.com slash toast one zero or just use code toast one zero at checkout caraway non-toxic cookware made modern also the non-toxicity is key especially i cook harry's food in of caraway, course and so it's like he's not going to now go to having toxins no no <laughs> not on my watch <laughs> no Okay, our first story. Taylor Swift took the Eras tour to MetLife Stadium. There was Ice Spice. There was Jack Antonoff. There was Aaron Rodgers. Miles, Miles Teller, Teller. Kelly Teller, Teller. Paul Rudd. Sean and Camilla Mendez. There were so many. When I was there, I saw Mariska Hargitay. Whoa. I got a great picture Peter of her. Herman. I didn't see him. Just Mariska. Mariska Hargitay, Molly Ringwald. I thought they were just being, you know. Were they all in the tent? Yes. Well, something interesting that happened was in our section was Kate Upton. We were like, why isn't Kate Upton in the tent? And then Mariska was like staring at our section. Our section was right behind the celebrity tent. So we saw everything. And she's talking to a security guard. She's on the phone and she's looking up. And then Kate Upton disappears and never comes back. So I want to believe that Mariska was coordinating Kate's arrival to the tent. Because Mariska is like a, an OG Taylor fan. I feel like she has pull in the tent. Yeah, but what's the relationship between Kate and Mariska? I don't know. I just feel like celebrities know each other. And, you know, now 
Kate Upton is like a New York elite because her husband plays for the Mets, and Mariska is literally the New York I'm obsessed. elite. Obsessed. Yeah, I think that's how, how was it went Kate down. Upton? Gorgeous, like just I so. I love her. I know. Was she with her daughter? No. She, no. No. She went to Eras without her daughter. Eras. Did she, she went just by herself? I don't remember. I don't. Remember. I wasn't looking at the people around her. I was literally just looking at her. Fair. Um. So Molly Ringwald. The night that we went, Hoda, Molly Ringwald, um, Lin Manuel Miranda, Mariska, Kate Upton. There were a lot oh, of the people. The night that you went. Yeah. Nikki Hilton was there with her daughters, but they weren't in the. They tent. weren't in the tent. I think they were in a suite. Yeah. Um. They and were then the just next. Living life. Yeah. The next night, Paul Rudd, Aaron Rodgers, Miles Teller, that that whole crew. Um. Camilla and Sean. Oh, Marin Morris went. Um, a lot of other people. It was like really star-studded. I feel like they had to make the tent bigger. Yeah. Like, usually it's like two or three, but there were like tons of A-listers. I mean, I don't know how big they're going to have to make the tent in L.A. Well, in there's LA. five shows. There's five shows. And the, uh, the tent was interesting because her family has their own tent. They're not in the celebrity tent. I don't know if that's always been that way, but now there's two tents. Wow. Like family and then friends and celebrities. And... Um, Julia Gardner was there yes, third night. Yes, yes, yes. Anna Delvey. Anna Delvey was there. So see, so good to see her out doing well. Yeah. Um, it was popping. Like honestly, the hottest ticket in town. Yeah, it really was, and it's just crazy. All those people like forsook Memorial Day plans, right, to be with Taylor. Right. Unless they like you know just flew in from the Hamptons. I actually did see, um, which was cool when we were pulling up. There's like a helicopter landing, and there was one landing like on the pad. So we were like trying to see who it was, but they literally just were ushered literally from the helicopter to an SUV into a tunnel, like into the stadium. So I was thinking maybe it was Taylor. Like it was elite treatment. That's crazy. Yeah. So Ice Spice performed the three nights, yeah. Karma, because also all the songs dropped. So right. Hits, hits different, different. The new vault track, you You're Losing, losing Me. me. And then the Ice Spice, Karma, and the Lana Del Rey. Yeah, which, ha which has more Lana. Yeah. It's hard for me when I'm listening to like realize that there's a difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like the old version. I'm fine with mm -hmm. it. Um, what's with the new tracks? Like what's the hidden meanings? What are we learning? I haven't listened to You're Losing Me yet. I just honestly didn't find the time this weekend. And I've been so, I listened on repeat literally this morning. It Hits Different is probably one of my favorite Taylor songs ever. Like it is so good. Oh wow. I did a story this morning like asking people what do you want in the Fast Five and like a couple people wrote like you're losing me and I was like that's fucking rude. Like uh, what did I do? <laughs> like, that no. <laughs> so no they, you guys hurt Jax this morning. No but then I realized. The song. The song. Because someone said you're losing me Taylor's and so I was like okay. oh okay. So that's all there is that's to say. That's funny. That's all there is to say about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. No there people are um, like dissecting the bridge and who would want to I wouldn't want to marry me either a pathological people pleaser now everyone's looking at midnights like as a breakup album when at first it didn't occur to anyone because she was with joe because she was with joe but it's most likely that she was writing these songs during you know the end of their relationship and and when things started to go awry and now you're looking at it with a new lens i don't know i don't think maybe it's like one or two of them but i don't think you can like say that about the whole album because one didn't she say early on like these are the songs about things throughout that my keep life. you up at midnight. Yeah, these are different nights throughout my life. Of things that like keep you up. So I think it's like That's a good point. more history there. And two, like she just writes about random shit at this point. Like The Great War is apparently about Lady Mary and Cousin Matthew. No fucking way. You, I didn't hear that. How would I have heard that Wait, about you? It totally is. I'm obsessed. obsessed. Yeah, no, she's she now and she has said like ever since Folklore and Evermore, like we really don't need to like dissect the lyrics as much as we do because she'll write it up based off of a movie she watched or a book that she read or something her friend is going through. Like a lot of the songs on, not a lot, but like two on Folklore and Evermore are about Abigail's divorce. So it's not about Taylor per se. So we don't really need to look at it through that lens anymore. You know what I was thinking about this weekend, which was funny. It's like how we speculate, like which song is about like Taylor losing her virginity yeah. and when and it's like but we all know when Abigail did we all know when Abigail did <laughs> because back then she swore she was gonna marry him someday you know yeah and Abigail was so brave for that like yeah I mean I'm sure she didn't think like her friend who was like playing her guitar at the time was gonna literally become the <laughs> biggest star in the world and like one of, her, one of like, her biggest songs was going to be the song about her, Abigail losing her virginity. I'm sure she just to thought... To a boy who changed his mind and we both cried. Right. Like, I'm sure she just thought she would, like, put it on YouTube and that would be the end of it. Right. No, she's going to perform at night, too, in Nashville, Eras tour to right. 70,000 people. Yeah. But I Sorry. think it's okay. I think it's okay. It's I think okay. Abigail has healed, you know? Wasn't there a rumor at one point that there was a rift between them? I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. 
Abigail's like the Maybe one constant. Maybe it was constant. about Abigail's divorce then. Yeah, so Abigail has like a, kind of like a crazy like thing going on. I think like there was infidelity and now she's like with the guy. I don't know. What song is reportedly about Abigail's divorce? Tolerate It. Okay. And Happiness. Got it. Two of the worst songs in my opinion. <laughs> Also, I think it's like nice that Taylor could like write a really um, beautiful intimate, like song. No, and then if she doesn't want to like expose herself as like this is about me, there's this mystery of like it could be about anything. No, but there's also like the I think a part of Taylor probably worries like you know if everything settles down in her life like what will she write about and like the fact that she some of her, I would say her best work folklore and evermore are actually like really not about her. Mm -hmm. um, is great like she doesn't have to keep living and like breaking up and making up like she can she's settle co constantly inspired right and it's cool to be inspired by books and, and she's TV inspired shows. by those writers lakes the lakes she was definitely inspired by evelyn hugo when she wrote champagne problems you truly cannot convince me otherwise yeah you love to see it yeah and evelyn hugo was definitely inspired by her taylor jenkins Reid has said it's like it's not not like you know well i think that book and other books like it are like a accumulations character of yeah. a lot of different characters yeah composite characters of different characters composite characters of composited characters who are composites <laughs> of other people and they're composited together in and a it's way really, that it's really like a competition <laughs> composition don't you think a composition of one character right who's an accumulation of multiple characters in that composite exactly well Congrats on a great weekend, Taylored. I am going to get dressed in Stay Alert this week. You are? Yeah. Where is she going next? Chicago. She's definitely going to be in New York until she has to go to Chicago. Okay. And, oh, we didn't talk about Aaron Rodgers, who's a big Swifty. We had been knowing this because we were literally obsessed with that video Kelly Taylor posted of her, Aaron Rodgers, Shailene Woodley, and Miles all vibing out to the one in Hawaii. Like, literally, Taylor said it best. Like, everybody, time flies but I'm right where you left me. I'm right where you left me at that video. Like, I have not moved on from that video. No, and Aaron Rodgers is a folklore girly. Yes, he's definitely. He's in his folklore era. Yeah, and so a lot of people were filming him during the show when the Evermore era was. Because he was living was. his best life. He was having fun. I think he has, like, a kind of, like, a reputation for being, like, a little bit of, like, a like a sourpuss, you know? Okay. So it was nice to see him, like, living his best life. And you know what? Like, this is kind of, in my opinion, going to be the renaissance of of Aaron Rodgers, like in terms of celebrity, because he's now like, you know, the number one guy in New York. Yeah. He's gonna bring this defunct franchise, hopefully into a new era. And I think a lot of people are putting like a lot of pressure on him. And I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna show up for us. You think he's gonna rise to the occasion? I do. I won't lie, I did miss Shailene in those videos. I know. Her absence was felt by me. I would have loved to see her like running around barefoot in the tent. Yeah. Yeah. That was tough. Yeah. But I'm but glad, I'm glad that the, the crew is still crewing. Yeah. The Tellers and the Rogers. Yeah. Okay, ready for our next story, which no. is... No. If I could Taylor truly Jason anyway. come back to life as one person, like, it might be Kelly Teller. Yeah. For so many reasons. But her association to Taylor is definitely up there. Oh, yeah. But that's not even, like, number th top three. No, she's literally gorgeous. She's married to Miles Teller. She has, like, such a cool family. Like, they're all, like always hanging out and like being best friends and they're all sisters and the husbands are what's that like yeah no no it's like it's giving us but like better and like non-jewish you know like yeah. they're literally like giving non-jewish ashray energy and they have like kids and they're like always going on vacation like it's just really it looks nice yeah what's the taylor jason story maddie healy oh uh, what now he's gonna gave an interview to the new yorker oh, and yeah. he's uh dismissing deluded podcast controversy sure amid the Taylor romance rumors. So three months after Maddie Healy recorded a controversial Adam Friedland show podcast episodes, he wants haters to shake it off. Mm. In the 1975 front man told the New Yorker in an interview published Monday that his February comments don't actually matter and were a little bit bait for naysayers. He said, quote, nobody is sitting there at night slumped at their computer and their boyfriend comes over and goes, what's wrong, darling? And they go, it's just this thing with Maddie Healy. <laughs> he said, that doesn't happen. And then when he subsequently acknowledged that maybe it does happen, mm -hmm. he called those affected people deluded individuals. He said, you're either lying that you are hurt or you're a bit mental for being hurt it's just people going oh there's a bad thing over there let me get as close to it as possible so you can see how good I am and I kind of want them to do that because they're demonstrating something so base level well it's a very brave hot take on like internet culture um and kind of stan culture too because like 
when someone you like or idolize, you know, maybe makes a decision or does something that you don't wholeheartedly agree with, people love to be like, this really hurts. And I think we need to be really careful about language Mm -hmm. because you're not hurt. You're living your life and really this has not affected you whatsoever. So I think what, what he's saying and I actually really agree with is like, the way stan culture like manipulates language and also like blows things out of proportion all the time it really needs to be spoken about like more more so than anything yeah i think it's a really fresh take yeah, on it's a hot all of take. this i appreciate it and i don't think he's wrong like it really doesn't affect people's day to day and if it does like and maybe it does that's a you problem no and that's really like a psychological issue yeah. that that person needs to work on because if you're letting the words and by the way what's so interesting and i've really and in this case it's not even the words of like your favorite 1975 frontman it's the words of your favorite girl's boyfriend right it's really like so disconnected and it's so far removed but the way people really like enwrap themselves in celebrities is really toxic and this is like the perfect example of that like you should not be personally offended by what someone who you've never met has done or said you know it's not it's not healthy no no, but it's also just like offense culture. Yeah, well, you of know? course. And, and that's it, what he's saying. It's like, it's not about people actually be offend- being offended. It's like them having something to say against you. And now. just like being so excited to have like the moral high ground. I also think sometimes when things like this happen, it's not that always just the stands who are like grabbing their pitchforks. No. It's just anybody who wants to feel like morally superior being like, you did a bad thing. Right, right. And I don't know, just like for me, even if it, like the person who I love most in this world, like in terms of celebrity and, and idol is really Taylor. And if she did something that like, or said, said said something that like I really disagreed with, like, sure, would I care? Yes. Would I literally move on with my life and like, would my life be affected? No. Has she never said anything that you disagree with up until this point? Of course she has, but they right. don't, like, they don't right. even come it to mind. Even register. Yeah. Because no, you just move on. Right. And like, you could still love somebody. Like this whole concept that like, you can only be a fan of somebody who agrees with every single principle. It literally reminds me when Jay Shetty was on the podcast, he was like talking about how it's important to date someone with similar values to you. But at the end of the day, like your values are like DNA. Like they're even someone, even you and I have diff- are we gonna have the disagree. same values, but we're so different because it's so specific to literally who you are and every human experience you've ever had yep. and so to expect that of someone and to project that on someone is so toxic and like no, and you're it's never impossible. impossible it's impossible i was having this conversation with someone and i feel like sometimes you talk about someone and it's like well i don't agree with everything that they think who or does? say it's like i couldn't name one person on this earth who i agree with about every single thing literally you and no, i not even not you, even, even you. though we agree about everything 99.999 percent of things no and that's okay and it's like what happened to celebrate? What what happened to hello? So it's just How weird. Are this, you? Like, this qualifier you have to put in front of everything. Yeah, no, it's like, well, duh. Duh. We're all different people. We've all <laughs> experienced different things. Right. So uh, people, and then the people who he's talking to in this article, then I saw on TikTok, they were like, I am so upset. Like, really, people need to touch grass. They have absolutely got to get off the internet. Like, some people just can't handle the internet. And I think that's okay, but they need to acknowledge that. But they're that. the most internet of I all. I know. They're and the they most, have, like, power. They're the most they're spending the most time online right it's like their insane content and backlash requires maddie healy to do stuff like this this article yeah yeah but i also think he likes like ruffling everyone's feathers he does and letting them know that he still doesn't care and they're not getting their apology yeah no he does this thing now at the beginning not at the beginning in the middle of his shows where he talks in between songs but um he's like about to say something crazy and the music cuts him off like the band comes in so he's like is it anti-semitic to say and then the band comes in and it's like it's funny like it's it really is like a joke and I think people That's really so funny. I saw one of those and that, they do it at like every and no, show and like taken out of context I thought it was just one it's like even his band doesn't want him to speak because they know what he says is gonna be so terrible right but he's clearly like he's clearly commentating on the state of culture but some people are too dense and too in it to even see that like they're actually being mocked yeah but they don't they don't see it they're like look he can't hold himself back. People are so <laughs> not fucking okay. Like, honestly, this is funny to me. It is. It is funny to me. And I'm I'm shipping for Taylor. No, me too. Obsessed. Even though he wasn't at any of the concerts this weekend. But I think he had work to do. Like, you know, he's also he, He's been really a celebrity yeah. too. Are you ready for our next story? Some more concert news, but not Taylor. Yes. Proud mom Beyonce praises her daughter's parents per- Paris performance Beyonce paid tribute to daughter Blue Ivy following the 11 year old surprise cameo during her mom's renaissance tour on Friday she said my beautiful firstborn I'm so proud and thankful to be your mama you bring us so much joy my sweet angel Um, that's so cute Blue Ivy came out during uh 
Beyonce's performance of her song My Power and she sang along with the she danced, danced along with the dancers. I thought I was like, oh I didn't see her saying. No, no, sorry. No, she's a very good dancer. Yeah. Like she was keeping up with the professional choreography. Yeah. And I think she it came out again the next too. night. Yeah. I saw two different videos of her dancing. This is the kind of nepotism I absolutely love to see. Totally. Like, obsessed. And it's just, like, fun for the fans. Yeah. And she, like, if you're, you know, zoomed out on the show, like, it's just another dancer. Right, she's keeping up. She's not a detriment. Right, right. I think it's awesome. And it's such a cool opportunity, especially if she loves to dance. Like, why not dance on the biggest stage in the world? Right. What if I just... What if I just called up mom? And went on the Renaissance tour. So cool. She looked great. She kept up. She's a very, very skilled dancer. Mm -hmm. And Beyonce's dancers, I mean, all dancers on, like, big tours do the most but like Beyonce's dancers really yeah. take it to like another level so her being able to keep up like I see a future for blue yeah Kylie was at Beyonce's show in Paris yes Kylie was, Kylie was stunting on them hoes in those Chanel those loops per- she was stunting on those Parisian hoes she was stunting on that cobblestone she w- was having a great weekend in Paris I loved friends. the Chanel looks were they all Chanel I think so I thought some she's like there she's like the new face of D&G also Oh, how does Courtney feel about I that? I know, because like I saw on her stories, like there was pictures of her, like in the display. Oh, I'm so sorry. I I, I thought they were all Chanel, but I might just be. I don't even no, know. I'm thinking where they, did I hear that? Dolce. I didn't hear Chanel. She was just giving a very classy energy. Yeah, maybe I assume. No, I'm I, I'm not making that up. Like okay. I heard it somewhere. I'm gonna Google. I'm gonna Google. What'd you Google? Kylie Jenner, Dolce and Gabbana. Okay, now Google Kylie Jenner Chanel. Okay. I would love that for her. I mean, they looked so like crisp white Chanel. Two days ago, she stopped by the Chanel store. Oh, okay, okay. In a in a white mini skirt and matching blazer. But who made that outfit? That white outfit was like the one. Yeah, she looked so adorable. But she's also like she's been doing a lot of couture stuff, and she's the new face of um, she did John Paul JPG JPG not. The Nazi. It's very confusing. Jean Paul Gaultier. Yeah. Very different than oh her st- John Galliano, who's very different from Jean Valjean. She is wearing a look by Maximilian Davis. Oh, okay. Oh, you could buy it now. How much is it? Four hundred thirty-five dollars for the skirt on Matches Fashion. Okay, that's like less than I expected. No. Yeah, I thought this. Yeah, was like you know bespoke. It's so cute. I'll accept these cookies. Oh, and the top is on sale for seven hundred twenty-five dollars. Wow, Kylie wearing a thousand dollar look, thrifty queen. Like, I love Arganista. this outfit. I, she's a maxinista. Yeah, she's balling on a budget. Balling on a budget. Tough times over at Kylie Cosmetics. Um, it's such a cute outfit. I can't believe it's so accessible. Like, if it only would fit me right now, I would snatch it up. Her stories, um, at the concert, like, looked so fun. I love when Kylie just like Kylie doesn't go Has out a much. Night out with her friends, but when, but when she, she does, does, she goes big. She's doing the most. She's flying to Paris. She's in the box. She's taking everyone with her. They're like, drinking. Yeah, they're she, making TikToks. She goes they're all going out. Full glam. It's like a, it's a quarterly affair. No, I feel like it, it depends on the season of her life. You know. Yeah, of course. Because there was a time when it was like a weekly affair, and she really loves more than any of the other girls like partying. Yeah, she's the youngest. Like yeah. we, I literally forget she's the youngest because she's so mature and like. Her business and her family, like, she's got it all secured. But she's literally, like, 24. No, she's, like, 20. She, I think she's turning 27. Really? Yeah. Is she older or younger than the Snatchler? That's a good question. Age. Her birthday's in August. Oh, she's 25 right now, and she's turning 26. So That's she's so Margot's young. age. That's literally so young. Yeah, she's Margot. Yeah. Just, like, a little cooler. Just a little. <laughs> No, I really mean it. Just a little. Margo's really cool. Margo's really cool. And you got to spend a lot of time with her this weekend. I know. Like, I, I don't know if, updates? if Era's tour on Friday night was so amazing because the show was so amazing or because I got, like, the most quality, undivided, core memory attention from this natural. Like, that was the best part of the night. What did you guys talk about, like, in the car on the way there? That's a good question. We talked. We actually talked about, like, the whole car ride. That's so snatchler. We were like planning logistics, charging our she phones. Doesn't love, she's not super chatty in general, but like if you get her in a car, she'll start talking. No, she won't we stop. We should hang out with her in cars more often. We should get, I've actually been thinking, like I'm, I think it's time for like the first time in my life, like I need to get a car. And that would and be And maybe I'll just drive around town and scoop up the snatchler. I'll be her chauffeur. That would be good for your relationship with her. She'll sit in the back and I'll sit in the front. And she'll just start talking. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you guys talk about? Just like everything. Do you think like more like Era stuff or like life stuff? Like both. Interesting. You guys to, about try, me? I was going to say, I was trying to remember if you came up, but like I don't think you did. Sorry. 
it's okay. It's better than you coming up and her having something bad to say. So true. So just count your blessings. So true. Count your blessings. Are you ready for our next story? If it's the next story that's brought to you by Bowling Branch. Tis. Wake up feeling rested and refreshed with the softest, most luxurious sheets from Bowl & Branch. Bowl & Branch is the bedding expert. They make the highest quality sheets with incredible craftsmanship. Each sheet set is slow made for an unmatched softness with 100% traceable organic cotton that gets softer with every wash. So Jax and I have been Bowl & Branch girlies for a while. Like we hate to say I told you so, but every time we convert one of you, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I Like we told you. We sat here for years telling you. Yeah. I don't know how many words I can say it. Like, you want to trust me on one thing? All right, maybe you don't trust me on like which, you know, produce is the best. But you can trust me on which sheets are the best because I'm a sleep expert and Bowl and Branch are the sleep experts. We both have the Signature Hemp Sheets collection from Bowl and Branch. It's their best seller for a reason. They are superior in softness and they get, they really just they give you a better night's sleep. They feel buttery to the touch. They are super breathable and they're perfect for both cooler and warmer weather. They're loved by millions of sleepers. They have been beloved by over, not over, sorry, excuse me. They've been beloved by four U.S. presidents and they have over 10,000 rave reviews. They come in 10 versatile colors and all sizes. So if, whether you have a twin bed, they go all the way up to California King. They're incredible for all sleepers and they're made without toxins, synthetic pesticides, formaldehyde, other harsh chemicals. Get better sleep at night with Bowl & Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code TOAST at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl & Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com promo code toast exclusions apply see site for details we love their sheets but we also love a lot of their accessories like our throw blankets are from there waffle blanket the waffle blanket we have a lot of their stuff today's episode is also brought to you by quince shopping for clothes is a compromise it often feels like we have to choose between saving up for an expensive luxury piece or settling for a cheap fast fashion item that will not last that was until we elevated our closet with quince with quince we get high quality timeless pieces without paying a luxury price tag they offer a range of must-haves like 100 percent mongolian cashmere sweaters for only 50 dollars. the sweater that i wore on the toast when i did page to sorbo episode everyone was like oh my god you look amazing and Paige actually said i looked like a rich older woman like coastal grandmother that was quince um so that was the Mongolian cashmere sweater for only $50. They have 100% European linen pants for only $40, which is like what everyone's wearing right now. They have luxurious mulberry silk skirts at $60 and $50 Italian leather bags. So all their pieces are 50 to 80% less than similar luxury brands. And that's because Quince creates timeless classic styles that won't go out of fashion. So you'll have them in your closet forever. So again, I got that cashmere sweater. I also got a really cute like cropped cardigan Everything I got from Quince is really good. A cardigan, and they're like you wouldn't remember it because they're just staple pieces, and you can wear them like multiple times a week if you style them differently. I love to repeat outfits. Um, Quince basically how they keep their prices down is they partner directly with top factories to cut the cost of the middleman and pay, pass the savings on to you. They only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium eco-friendly fabrics. So we can feel good about getting high quality items that last longer. Shop with Quince today and discover the affordable luxury that you deserve. Right now, go to quince.com slash toast to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's unheard of. 365. You hear that, Jax? 365 day returns. 365. 365. That's Quince, which is spelled Q-U-I. What if it's a leap year? I'll have to ask. I'll get back to you next time. <laughs> Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash toast for free shipping, 365 day returns. That's Quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash T-O-A-S-T. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our next story, Tom Sandoval was seen talking Ugh. on the phone with Raquel after breakup news. Yeah, this picture went viral of him on a plane. On the phone, contact Raquel Levis. Right, he was like on a phone call and his phone was like kind of turned outward like towards the person <laughs> taking the photo. You think it was intentional? Well, then I fell down a rabbit hole on TikTok of people being like, you know, he's doing, you know, PR. There's like a lot of speculation in the last couple of days, like he had broken up with Raquel. He was dating this influencer. Then that influencer deactivated all of her socials. Actually, Kristen Doty is on the Good Guys podcast this week. I was watching it this morning. I have like 10 minutes left. Um, and she was talking about how like he was speculated to have been dating this girl. And then like the girl is an influencer and she literally deactivated all of her social media, maybe because she didn't want to be associated with Tom and like an influencer would never, because if an influencer was actually dating him, they would be like eating all this up. Right. Um, just quick shout out to the good guys. So I don't know what he would be getting out of this if it is like a PR stunt. It just like looked, it looked a little, a little staged, but it also looked very, you know, boots on the ground, Tom in the wild. I don't think it's staged, but I also like really try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I really could imagine like he's hiding his face and I feel like he thinks that like, that's all he's concerned about and doesn't right, not realize the phone. that. Yeah, because we've never really caught someone like this 
it's not like a known thing. It's very intimate. Like You know what I mean? Like I feel like there's a way where he didn't even realize that he was showing people that because no, he possible. was more so worried about like himself, which is so Tom Sandoval. Yeah. I wonder where he was going. He was on a plane. I also don't think that they broke up. Like there's been so many rumors coming out like I don't believe any of them. Yeah. I think that they are together and in love. I don't think she's pregnant, but I would sooner believe that she's pregnant that that than that they broke up. He was dating someone else. They are talking on the yeah. phone. Like this whole mess. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's dating someone else. I do. I mean, I honestly hope they're still together, like for mm-hmm. both of their sakes, mostly hers. Um, but I do think she's still in a facility. She hasn't been seen or heard from. So maybe but she has her cell phone. Right. Maybe it was like their weekly call time. I don't think she has like, you know, unlimited access to her phone in a place like that no she doesn't because she's writing letters right the morgan ladders but i guess the letter said didn't say dear tom maybe not well maybe it started out dear tom but it wasn't a breakup letter yeah it's like dear tom the food is great and i'm making a lot of friends yeah dear tom send socks i'm all out like dear, camp yeah i used to like hate writing letters at camp but you know what when they used to have those books of letters that were like kind of like mad libs where it was yeah, like, it would fill it in for my you. friends are blank i'm having a blank time at camp and you would yeah. be like awesome yeah it would make letter or writing so easy terrible right but now um when i look back on like letter writing at camp it's like so i look back on it so fondly like i wish i did it more it's such a beautiful concept and like you know at our camp some like maybe once a week you would have to write a letter um you'd have to show up to dinner with a letter, just so like they made sure everyone was writing their parents. It was nice. Now I, I guess they have like cell phone time at camp, which is yeah. so crazy to me. And like, honestly, not to sound like a grandma, I think camp was so amazing because we were so disconnected, like friend from like friends from home. Like it didn't matter. There was no need to like, I wasn't writing my friends letters at other camps. I was just writing my Maybe parents. Maybe like once throughout the summer, I would exchange with like a fr- intercamp letter. But like camp was its own universe. And, like, yeah. you didn't and everyone was in their own camp universe, bubble. you know? Yeah. It didn't feel like you were missing stuff at home. But like, like our parents like paid to like, for us to have this amazing time. Like the least we could do was write them a fucking letter. Yeah. But I found it like so dreadful. I'm like, oh, a letter. I didn't, I was like, I'm having a great time. It's like, please so you. don't pick me up. Like I never want to see you guys again. Like I loved camp so much. Like literally, I, I didn't want to be connected to the outside world. Right. But I feel like when you know you're kids which you know most parents do it's like not getting a letter from Claudia is a good sign is a good sign not getting a letter from most kids is probably a good sign yeah. because you know no news is good news they're, right, having, they're having too, too much, much fun. fun they're playing jacks at night they're not writing letters <sighs> in their bed alone with their flashlight like that's something I'm really excited about to have kids like but I don't know how I'm gonna fare I'm gonna be so jealous of my kids when they go to camp but I guess that's like when I'll travel and like get my life back yeah but knowing that my kids are like making memories like playing jacks like getting tan, living like so carefree, maybe having their first boyfriend. Like I'll be so jealous. I'm literally going to show up at camp every day. Be like, Hey girlies, what's up? What's, I'm literally, I'm literally going to be like the mom that works at camp. Like I'm going to be the arts. And, I'm going to be the arts and crafts teacher. Yeah. Cause I love camp so much. No, you'll have to create a life for yourself. That's outside more exciting. Like maybe you get a lake house and then you're with like Uh-oh. fellow like lake couples and you're having your own like adult okay. swingers camp. If I get a lake house, I will be jealous. All right. Yeah. That, put that on my list of like, I need like a, t- oh, I just, no, never mind. Um, I have like a 10 year plan. Lake house is one of them. Lake house greater than beach house? Like I kind of am into the lakey vibes. Maybe it's because last night I literally finished Meet Me at the Lake, the Carly Fortune book, and she really knows how to romanticize a lake. Her books always take place in Toronto, like Lake Muskoka. Um, and I gotta go. <laughs> I started the new book by Mae Cobb, who wrote The Hunting Wives. That's what I'm going to read next. I think you'll like it because it's pretty spicy. I don't remember oh, Hunting Wives being it was. spicy. There was a lot of like lesbian, like all these like straight, married, like uptight rich women like fucking each other on the weekends. Really? Yeah, there was like a, a lesbian undercurrent. It was very sexy. I don't remember that because I was like, damn, Mae Cobb. And now I'm like, I put this book on my story. People think I'm reading porn. Oh, is it like full? Oh, now you're making me want to read it even more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like, more, but so far, like the plot is finished, mm. but I don't, I have no idea what's coming. Okay. Like, maybe I'm going to wait for you to finish it. Like maybe it's good for my book a, club. Oh, I'll let you know. But like, is spice good for the book club? The book club loves spice. Oh, okay. Yeah. We all, we all swap. It's like, there's something about it. I feel like, you know, when you're reading something and it's like, this is so stupid. And then, but by the end, it makes sense. Like why all those stupid things yeah, happen. Like cause someone was intentionally being stupid right so I don't want to judge it until I'm done with it because right now it's like I could poke a few holes okay 
I could poke a few. I also read The Housemaid this weekend. Oh, yeah. I read all weekend. I didn't watch TV except for Succession. I read The Housemaid and the sequel. So good. Yeah, I read it like really quick on a weekend, both of them. Both of them I read in one day. Good, good books. The second one I like started at noon and I finished at 10 p.m. There's She writes like a lot of good thrillers. Like I think she's an author now. If you pick up her book, like you know it's good. Like a Sally Hepworth. You know you're always going to get She's a good it. writer. There yeah. were a lot of twists that I didn't see coming. Yeah, Freedom McFadden. I would recommend. Okay, good. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? I am. New couple alert. Hmm. Haley Steinfeld has been <gasps> dating Josh Allen for a few weeks, says a source. They're having fun. Yeah, this was interesting. Josh Allen's like a star. Yeah, Haley Steinfeld and Josh Allen have been hanging out for a few weeks. A, cor- a source close to the couple told People Magazine um, the cute couple have been photographed together multiple times over the last few days in New York City. Why wasn't she at Eros? She's in the Bad Blood She's music a former video. squad girl. Yeah. Did they end on bad terms? She was like in the squad and then never to be seen again. Yeah, but she was really in the squad. She's yeah. kind of like one of the faces core of the members. Squad. There were some randos. Yeah, of course. Who only got like the invite once. Yeah, but she's a core squad. Yeah. Anyways, the insider said it's new, but they're having fun. Was he married? I don't think so. I feel like they're always doing packages about him on ESPN. Like he's a star. And I'm always happening to watch them. No, he's 27. Oh, he's young. I'm not seeing a, a marriage here. Haley Steinfeld like has an amazing dating track record. Like Niall Horan. Okay. Josh Allen. And that's all I can think of. But and I also like don't fully believe in Niall Horan. Like I feel like that was don't? more like PR convenient. A little bit. Oh, interesting. I could see that having been. Haley Steinfeld like is such a good level of celebrity. Mm-hmm. I feel like she makes a lot of money. Like she's very um, A-list. But she's not, like, she probably has a normal life. Like, she can go to the grocery store. But she can date whoever she wants, you know? Yeah. No, I really, I I love this for her, if true. I'm wondering why they weren't at Eras. Maybe they'll be at the one at the Buffalo Bills Stadium. There isn't one. Maybe Pittsburgh. I don't know if Pittsburgh is close to Buffalo, but I feel like it is. I don't think it is. I think it is. Philly's south of here, and Buffalo is north of here. Such a good point, yeah. Well, actually, Pennsylvania is west of here. Oh. But still... Buffalo's north. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put this rumor to rest and figure it out right now. Ready? I guess we'll just look at a map. Pittsburgh to Buffalo. I'm just pulling up Google Maps. I'm like one thing about me, I don't know geography, and I never will. It just really depends for me. Oh, Pittsburgh Three is hours. so west. Where's Buffalo? Okay, they're like not far from each other, but they're not. I'm just like not seeing Buffalo. By the way, they're actually like. By the way, what's so crazy is like Pennsylvania and Buffalo and P- Pittsburgh and Buffalo are so far from here. Like you think it's all like northeast. It's so far. No, Pittsburgh is like on the western border of Pennsylvania. And Buffalo is literally in Canada. Yeah. When I did a show in like Buffalo, Rochester area, people were like driving from Toronto. It was oh, crazy. actually, I'm sorry. Buffalo would be closer to Pittsburgh. It's kind of a triangle. But the Buffalo side is closer to Pittsburgh. Much. Everything. It's I not know. due north. It's northwest of due New York. Due north. <laughs> Everything I know about geography, which is extremely limited, I only know because of tour. Like, I know nothing about geography from school. That was, like, not even a class I took. Mm. It depends on the, on the location. You know, I like to pride myself on being an arbiter of New York geography because I went to school upstate, but I don't know where the fuck Buffalo is. No, but is. there are parts of New York and parts of Pennsylvania that are so far away, it's crazy. Yeah. That I knew. Yeah, like Syracuse, Utica. Yeah, I know these That's teams. upstate, like classic. Classic. Where all the colleges are. Yeah, but Ithaca. also classic is like Hudson Valley upstate. Yeah. That's like fup state. Because yeah, because it's, really it's like an close. hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was the story? Oh, yeah, Josh Allen and Haley Steinfeld. Here for it. Josh Allen, like I know nothing about football. I don't even, I, I think... I think he plays for Buffalo, but like I really know nothing beyond that. He's a pride and joy of Buffalo, and they're really passionate fans. But he, I, what I know about him is he had old tweets, and he went from like the number one draft pick to like number ninety, and had like all this promise. And I relate to him because like you know things from our past should not come back to haunt you, and, and I really felt bad for him in that moment. Um, and he got it together. Now he has like a great contract, but like he was like number one kid, you know, from that year, and he had like some song lyrics, you know, with inappropriate words. 
and his life was over. And I honestly I just... I feel like you've told that story before, but I genuinely forgot, and that's so crazy. It's all I think about, but because he's obviously all accomplished a lot since then. These, I feel like every time I walk past the TV when Zach's watching sports, it's a package about Josh Allen and how he gives back to his community. Does he? Yeah, like he's really the beacon of... They love him. Love his that. community loves him. But you know, you know who else Buffalo loved who was a beacon of their community? OJ. So maybe they don't have a great barometer. Radar? Yeah. Okay, well, way to ruin a beautiful story. Those are just like, there are a few things I know about football, and one of them is that like OJ was like the king of Buffalo. Was, is that really his like, he played for a few teams, but like yeah, Buffalo but like, was like. Was like, like, that's where his greatest moment happened. That's like happened. LeBron and the Cavaliers. Exactly. Or no, like LeBron and the Heat. No, the Heat was just like a transient experience so he could get but a ring. But he was taking his talents to South Beach. Yeah, so he could get a, a ring, but he's Cleveland. Like, he's yeah, Cavaliers. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's Cavaliers. King Charles. Um, should we dive into this section recap before our interview? We shall. So last night's, well, two nights ago's episode, the series finale of Succession, let me tell you how I will not miss the show. But like, of course, and I've been very hard on it this the entire year, the, of course the final episode like was good, as it should be. Well, no, it it ended really good. And like now I could say the episode was good, but there were times while I was watching it where I was like, how much longer is this episode? Oh, like, I didn't feel that way. I thought it was a very good episode of TV. I need to get to the board meeting. But the, the fact that like the board meeting didn't go, that the kids like didn't stick together. Right, it was like this climax like you know the kids are fighting but then they go to the Caribbean and they work on it together and they all finally agree like it really can only be Kendall and then they're having fun in the kitchen and they're walking in there together and they're strong and they're a team peak and then like Roman starts to break a little bit and Shiv obviously breaks during the meeting and it really was like a roller coaster and I enjoyed it, made it. it even better like having to suffer through them pretending to be like good siblings to each other and like having like a fun kitchen moment even, yeah and like just like thinking that they're like a cute family and they're right. just like not they're not um it was, like, kind of painful to watch, but I know that, like, for the fans of, like, the kids, they probably ate that up. Yeah. Uh, but then to see it all come crashing down was, like, really justifying for me. But it was interesting because for so long, like, I was on I was on Logan's side when he was alive. Like, mm -hmm. his kids were, the, were really entitled, and they didn't deserve his business, and they just wanted it because they thought they should have it, not because they actually earned, deserved, or are good for it. Right. And, and this all, was his thing that he built as, but like... worse than being just, like, lazy and entitled, they actively worked against him and right. made the last year of his life as stressful right. as possible. So I was on Team Logan, and then when Logan was out of the picture, I didn't really know where to land. And I think for a while, like, the most tolerable kid was Roman. Yes. And... Over the last season, like, I just found myself not being able to root for him. And, and he definitely got, you know, a little ahead of himself. And with the Jerry thing, like, he was just fucking weird and, like, kind of gross. And all, like, the gross stuff he used to say, like, at first it was, like, a part of his personality. But in this last year, it was like, ew. Like, yeah. he couldn't root for him. No, and he was definitely my favorite kid. I missed the last two episodes where I just saw pieces of him. So I don't really, he seems to have some sort of breakdown. Um... But I also will remember to like the first season when he was like, really? I don't know what the word is, but like twisted. Yeah, you know, and dark. He, dark. And like I, the, even the first episode, there was like something with the watch and one of the kids like he was just like gross. And and I can't think of what the word was. But then when so I think of him as CEO, I'm like, you're not the right person either. Like you're into like dark stuff. And yeah, like, no, they all they have too much baggage. Kendall and um, Roman. Roman, obviously Kendall's a murderer. And Roman... But also, like, aside from the murder, which is not... Not, not a good, good thing. Not good to murder. Um, he literally, like, brought all that Cruz's stuff to light. Like, he tried so many different ways to destroy, to destroy, the, destroy company. the company. Like, why would you be at the And so now he it? cares about keeping it in the family. Right, but, he but didn't. like, you tried to take it from your dad so many times to give it to no one. Like, when he was working on his, like, other projects, like the art collective right, thing. Like, right. I just... I can't. And then Shiv, like, she's the only one who doesn't have, like, this, you know, skeleton-filled closet, but she's the least qualified. She's never worked at the company. She, like, took on a passion project and, like, worked in politics for a while, but she knows nothing about running a business, and she's probably the most entitled out of any of them because she's the least qualified mm -hmm. and really was the last one who would give it up to Kendall. Like, she was the one who took the most convincing. But what was interesting is, like, by the end, I kind of did find myself being, like, well, it should be Kendall. And like when he didn't get it, I was like, oh, like it was a weird mix of I hate these kids. None of them are deserving. But by the end, I'm like, well, it should be Kendall. Like I did want them to keep the business in the family because it was what Logan wanted. But they did keep the business in the family. Well, by proxy through Shiv. Through Tom. Right. Now. The but also Logan was selling to Gojo. Right. 
-hmm. And he wanted to. And it was the kids who stopped the deal. That's true, actually. And he was literally going over there to make the deal happen. So you could say Logan wanted this, Logan wanted that. I I really don't think that beyond his lifetime Logan cared what happened or else he would have had like a much more stable plan concrete will and everything now the arc of Siobhan you know girl bossing her way to the top without ever like working a real job only to end up as the wife of the CEO when she started out as the daughter of the CEO like is too rich honestly like the the final scene of the car like where she's literally just taking his hand waiting for him in the car it was really ironic and it was very well done like it was poetic how she just tried to girl boss her way to the top and you know she was always the like token woman in the room but she really had no reason like she had no business being there but like beyond being a woman like she that was actually like her only qualification to like to shake things up right her like even at times throughout the seasons when like logan would kind of turn to her like she might have been the future of the company is because she's like a woman right and and she's could be more ushering in a new era um but no now she's just resigned to being a baby maker right no (laughs) and so like for that scene i thought like the most powerful scene was when they got in the car and like tom this like dopey fucking moron who actually was the only one who like got up and went to work every day (laughs) you know what he actually gets the job like it was so honestly brilliant it was was brilliant i can't believe that it turned out so beautifully like i just assumed it would be a uh, an ending that i would hate because i've hated most of the show but like Tom is, I mean, everyone likes Tom and Greg the best. I do think they're the, they're the least insufferable. But yeah. also when it comes to like who's doing work, who knows how the business works. Who is typing and sitting at a desk? <laughs> right. Who's looking at papers and things, not just being like, call, gotta fly, bye. Yeah, right, right. Like actually doing a job. <laughs> It's Tom. Like, he's worked in cruises. He did ATN. Yep. He's worked for the company for as long as like he's known Shiv. Like he has qualifications. Yeah. Maybe he's not the smartest guy in the room, or you know, he's not going to be the. But they don't need renegade. the smartest guy in the room. They have Matson. The he, the the person is a puppet, and it Shiv, Kendall, and Roman were never going to be what Matson no, needed. No, and when Matson said like, "I don't want more ideas," right? Like, I, that's I, so Tom. I felt that. Yeah, no, and that's literally Tom to a T. Like, he was up Logan's ass. He was up Shiv's ass. Like, he would just do what people told no, him even, to do. Like, when Tom is asked a question, he will give both answers. Yes yep. and no. Yep, yep, He's yep. like, well, I could do this, but also I could see that. And like, I see value in both. Yeah. What did you think about, like, him forgiving Greg in that final moment? Like, they had been through it all, and at the very end, like, Greg fucked it so bad. Yeah. Greg... I think that he should forgive Greg because, like, he, he's going to need people by his side. And who understands better than Tom, like, needing to throw someone under the bus for your own personal And also, game. like, needing to play. But, like, Tom was playing both sides yep. the whole time, too, like, trying to stay in everyone's good graces. So I think he'll forgive Greg because it worked out. If it hadn't worked out, like, no. So what do you think happens to the Roman, uh, the Roy kids now? Well, they have a ton of money. Yeah, because they sold. Because they sold. So they are buying Pierce still? Question mark? Whatever happened for, to that? What happened to the $10 million whole episode that we had to watch? Right. But no, I mean, like, are they forgiving each other? Like, is it irreparable? I think Aren't Shiv and, and Kendall going to be like, you know, Logan and his brother? I don't think it's irreparable because all throughout the seasons, they like hated each other on off, on off. And Did then they it, get it, back together. Things. They'll never like be actual good siblings to each other or family because they're incapable. But I just think it's another part of the up and down. Yeah. Maybe they'll start the hundred. And the way that like Roman went so hard only to just give up, like, he didn't even care. Like, he had, like, when he was co-CEO with Kendall, he had, like, a two-week period where he was a fucking nut job, like, calling the election just because he felt like it. Like, really nuts. And then right after that, he stopped caring. Like, he went to the Caribbean, and even at the board, like, he didn't care anymore. No, even they're trying to have a conversation about which way they're going to vote, and he's walking away, and it's like, well, you're not, can't, you can't even have a conversation. How You think you should be CEO? Right, no, of all of them, on, it's a tie for Kendall, for it, it's a tie, Shiv and Roman. It's a tie three for who's the best choice, and it's a tie of three for who's the worst no, choice. No, if there is a choice, it's Kendall. No, because. But that doesn't mean he's a good but choice. Kendall did the most harm to the company over the years. Yeah. No, and Kendall's just and like Roman, dumb. And Roman like worked for the company. He worked in LA. In studios. Yeah, yeah, but like, it's not. So Roman. did Kendall though. Yeah. Well, that's that on that. Goodbye. Goodbye. Succession. But like, I just want to say, I loved how it shook up. Me at too. The end. Me too. It was really kind of stunning. <laughs> and honestly, I think Logan would have liked it too. I think so too. And also, Tom was the only one who never betrayed Logan. Mm-hmm. Because he's a puppet. Yeah. 
He's a pawn. So really, Matson is in charge. Yeah. And the company moves into the future with an eccentric tech CEO. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, like, Tom is going to wipe out everyone who was, like, they, they never included him. Like, Frank, Carl, Jerry. He's wiping them all out. He's the big man now, and he's got, like, vendettas. Yeah. Now he's, like, as an actual powerful person, he's more powerful than all the people who he, like, sought attention from. Yeah. Who never gave it to him. But I could also see him keeping them on and, like, just making them grovel. Oh, yes, because he's also, like, a little bit, like, Machiavellian evil. Yeah, he likes to do it with Greg, and yeah. now he's got more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to be a father. I'm ready Everything's the, coming up Tom. I'm ready for the Tom sequel. The Tom spinoff. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe it was because he was, like, finally in charge, but like, I was like, yeah, Tom's hot. Yeah, also, obviously, Tom and Shiv are not a love match. Mm-hmm. And when they were finally, like, honest with each other on the balcony, like, that was really refreshing. But I also feel like they can make it work you know I ship yeah like I don't think that I mean I hope to God for her like that's really all she has yeah well no she has like billions of dollars oh, of course, and of now course. she'll have a baby right she can get into charity work and she could also like meet someone else mm-hmm. but I think like this life is the life that she's that they meant want. for you know yeah. Her husband's the CEO of Waystar Royco. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, couldn't be me, but but I really appreciated her about face. And then by the end, I got it. You know, you it's know, like, should it be Kendall, who is the devil the you know. Worst. The devil you know, Tom. Or the and devil you don't. The devil that you, like, she controls Tom. Like, can control Tom. Kendall's, like, so wild and really, like, a wild card. Loose cannon. She chose Tom over Kendall. And if that ain't saying a lot, then I don't know what is. Yeah, you would do it, too. You would do it, too. So that's your Succession series finale recap. But don't be upset. The episode is not over. Please continue listening for our interview with Brooke Eby. She is a delight. I think you guys will love her. It's a great, fun-filled episode and interview. And that's our show. So without further ado, that, do, that, do, I present to you, Brooke. The interview. The inimitable Brooke Eby. The wickedly talented, talented Brooke, Brooke Eby. Eby. Goodbye. Goodbye. Welcome back to The Toast. We are so excited to be sitting down with an extremely special guest. We have a toaster. We have an advocate. We have a TikToker. Jealous. Um, (laughs) We are sitting down with Brooke Eby, who is a toaster by, in her heart, correct? In my heart, deep in there. Okay, good. Um, But she's also a TikToker who has been documenting her amazing journey with her terminal diagnosis of ALS. Her TikToks were popping up all over my For You page like a week ago. And then everyone started tagging me in one of her videos. She had been asked, you know, is there any sort of list you have, sort of like an ALS bucket list that you would love to do? And one of the things on her list was to come on the toast. So I was not okay. Immediately, you know, had to make everything about myself. And I reached out. And a few days later, here you are. Hello, Brooke. Welcome to the toast. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I know I was listening to your show a couple days ago and I was like, guys, I manifested this. It's you like, did. no, everyone tagged Claudia. Yeah. See, that's the same thing. That's what manifestation yeah, that's, is. These that's days. what we call it these days. Um, so but thank we, you so much for having me. We're so excited you. to have you. And we're so flattered that we were on such your a list. Big part of your life and that this is such an honor. I know it was like an eight bullet list. I call it the adult Mm make-a-wish and toast was on there. That is such an honor for us. We are so excited to have you. So I'm sure, you know, a lot of people have seen your TikToks. It's ALS Awareness Month. So a lot of your posts have been going really viral. But for some of our, you know, not TikTok friendly users and listeners, even though you are on Reels. She is. My Reels fans. Yeah. Reels (laughs) fans are real fans. A hundred percent. She said it. She said it. She said it. Um, Tell us about your journey. A, you know, your diagnosis, how long it's been going on, and then your decision to document the whole journey on TikTok. Yeah, absolutely. So I started having symptoms in 2018. I I actually was listening to the toast throughout my four-year diagnosis period. So this is a bizarre coming (laughs) of coming of age moment. But I started limping in 2018. Like I work in the corporate world. I was living in New York City. And I just started limping on the way to a conference and all my coworkers were like, mm, you should probably get that checked out. Yeah. And I did, but they could not find anything for basically a year. Then I had basically four years of testing um, where they could not diagnose me. They couldn't figure anything out. And then beginning of last year, I started noticing I was limping on the other side as well, mm. which is when they were able to test me and officially give me an ALS diagnosis, which Some people know it's Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm -hmm. Um, All the baseball people know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. But I know. I don't don't look much like him. So I (laughs) I usually use No, no. You're beautiful, stunning, and smart. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, so four years of diagnosis, or really the diagnosis process. And then once I was diagnosed, it took me like two to three months of straight depression, like sitting in my bed, binge eating M&Ms. Mm-hmm. I listened to your book on tape, like oh. all of these things, all of these things come back to the toast. But um <laughs> Yeah, I I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, how do I process this? How do I grieve what I thought, you know, my 30s were going to be the rest of my life was going to be. And then I had to go to a wedding where you've probably seen this on TikTok, but I had to use a walker at a wedding with all of my college friends. Like, can you imagine anything more embarrassing than like (laughs) waddling your way in in your bridesmaid dress? Um, but like an hour into it, the bride was limboing under my walker. I was giving people walker rides all over the dance floor. Like it just ended up being so fun. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I feel like I should start sharing this story with more people because if I'm able to laugh about it. And I think people are so scared to ask questions about anything serious when it comes to like a terminal diagnosis. No one wants to say the wrong thing. They're afraid of being like inappropriate or, you know, offensive but I figured if I could laugh about it and start making videos about it then maybe we could spread the word a little bit more yeah I mean because when I saw your TikToks I'm like oh my god this girl has such energy like she radiates positivity and you're always smiling but I was curious if like you know when you first got the diagnosis there was like a dark period because I think that's a very natural reaction it was bleak yeah it was a couple months of just like survival um And I was not in a good place when people would ask me about it. Like Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk about it. So I actually think making videos for like TikTok and Reels um, have both (laughs) have really made me comfortable talking about it. And I just feel like we can laugh about it a little bit now, even though some people write like, why is she smiling? And I'm like, I can't help it. I don't know. It's just my face. You have a beautiful smile. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I feel like, you know, there's so many... I think people don't want to tap dance and don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think your attitude is so amazing. Like even I, and that's very much my, our philosophy. Like you got to laugh about things in life because you know, you'll drive yourself crazy if you don't. And I'm curious what the reception to your videos, like you, you go deep, you talk. And I, I learned so much from your TikToks. Like, you know, you said you were working in the corporate world and then you did a whole video on like your job situation. So I feel like it's really educational and and there is a natural curiosity. Yeah, I think, I mean, I've largely been amazed by the reception. Like I know that the social media world can get to a really dark and mean place. So the first couple of videos, I was so nervous to post. Like I made my best friend be in the first one because I'm like, you're going down with me if we get get embarrassed. Um, But ever since I get like pretty much all nice, responses and a lot of them are a lot of them are questions too like people want to know like how do you feel about you know like assisted death it's like very dark questions but I want people to feel comfortable asking them so it's been really nice and I would say like 99% are about ALS and then like 1% is about my hair always or like hair or you look like blank I I don't know if you guys get these too but like you look like blanks are so offensive they're so like, offensive claudia hates that what who do you get yeah who do you get okay i'll tell you the nice ones first and then i'll end on the whopper because okay. it has been haunting me <laughs> i get um who's that singer uh phoebe bridges i get her oh, okay and then i get ellen pompeo a lot yes i could see that. um i get a couple of Lindsay lohans but i think that's just because my hair is reddish yeah but the cruelest one <laughs> And I can, I have the screenshot still because I'm like, I can never forget this. It said, you look like pregnant Blake Lively because her lips were thinner. Oh, people (laughs) are not fucking okay, bro. I'm like, not only is it like, so you look like Blake Lively at her worst, plus minus a really good quality of hers. Right, her lips. So, yeah, that was a dark one. And I wrote back like, why did you have to say pregnant? And she never responded. Right. I think you actually look like Megan Fahey from- <gasps> Yes. Yeah, uh... I've gotten that one like twice. And I've like, I wish TikTok didn't take away the pinning thing. Cause I would have <laughs> pinned those. Like I, I'll take that all day. You do, that's a really good call. See, it's only okay to tell someone who you think their celebrity doppelganger is if their celebrity doppelganger is like insanely beautiful. No, but like, right. I feel like someone could 
think they're paying you a compliment and then yeah. you think actually that person is like less beautiful than you so it could go either way which is why it's like never really a great thing to do in my Claudia it takes so much umbrage with it yeah but I do think it's a fun exercise usually yeah. a little game yeah I've never heard it before with a preemptive pregnant though like that has no. to be a very yeah. new right. game no when she's not pregnant you look nothing like her yeah no I don't see it <laughs> <laughs> so, so brutal funny. So your yeah. life is like kind of really changed, obviously because of your diagnosis, but also because of your TikTok. Like I know you were on the Today Show recently. Yeah. Tell me about that. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. Like the social media world is so crazy to me because I, I mean, you guys have been doing it for so long. Like I just started a TikTok last summer and I basically had to YouTube like how to make a TikTok. <sighs> like none of it was new to me or none of it was, you know, common to me. And so... I just started making videos hoping for the best. Some of them would get like no views. And then if I posted a dating one, like it would go viral. And so I was like, okay, there's something here. Like if I can capture people's attention for like 10 seconds, uh -huh. then maybe they'll start being more interested in learning about ALS. Cause I don't think many people know what ALS is. Like the ice bucket challenge is probably yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, and so I just sort of started going for it and like, you think back to when you have like, you know, 40 followers and the videos I was posting, I'm like, how is I not a little embarrassed? Like oh talking God. into my oh. camera, like, hey guys. Uh, but <laughs> no. So yeah, the Today Show reached out to me on, on Instagram. They DM'd me like, hey, we want to write an article about you and about your diagnosis. Um, and once that article came out, the producer of the actual show was like, hey, we want to have you on our show. Um, and so I went like two weeks ago, I was in the city. It was the most blur of a morning I've ever had, but it was so cool. Like that's Savannah. She's something else. That's Savannah. She's something else. Well, like, she who is you, something else. So who do you have around you during this time? Like what, what is your village day day like? like? Yeah. So I, I work all day. Um, what do you do? So I work at Salesforce. So I'm in tech. Hmm. And I'm technically on the clock right now. So uh, just apparently. part of my day. It's a long you guys, are, you guys are my clients. Yeah. A hundred percent. And we need help with our sales force. And we we're do. hoping that you can give us those tools. Exactly. I'll give you all the tips. Um, so during the day, for mostly just, literally. <laughs> yeah. No, I keep saying their name and I'm like, should I just say a big tech company? Because I don't know. It That's sounds like question. I'm being paid by them. It um, does. <laughs> so it's just me and my dog during the day, mostly. Um, and then my family lives like, all within the Maryland area. So my parents are 10 minutes away for half the year. They're actually in Florida, the other half in Jupiter. And then my sister's like 40 minutes away. My boyfriend's like 30 minutes away. So I've, and I have a bunch of neighbors who have like quickly become my friends. Cause mm -hmm. I'll be like, guys, I can't load my wheelchair into my car and they'll have Hell. to come like just be my muscle. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I, in the weirdest way I was set up for the easiest version of having a really bad diagnosis. I had a really good group of friends. I had a really close family. I'm still getting a paycheck. Like everything yeah. was kind of set for me to be able to say, okay, let's just focus on the problem at hand. Yeah. And how long have you been with your boyfriend? Um, seven months. Oh, so, so it's I started new. dating. I started dating him post diagnosis. Um, oh, how did you so, meet? Yeah. He's a little nuts for doing that, but <laughs> I, I met him. So he's my sister's husband's best friend. Oh, that's so I've known so him. That's like a I book. know, I know. I know people are like, you need to write a, a rom-com about yes. this. Yes, you do. Claudia smut. would read it. As long as it's smut, extra I'll read spicy. it. Extra <laughs> spicy. Yeah, yeah, no, probably not. Um, <sighs> but yeah, so we, we met like 15 years ago at my sister's wedding, I think. It was probably the first time but we never lived in the same place. I was always in New York or San Francisco. He was always in Maryland. And so when I moved back, my sister was like, well, I think it's time. And so we just like started texting and then we hung out, but then I was diagnosed. So I went dark on him for like right. months. And then once I started coming to, he like invited me to a wedding, which I quickly said no to. Cause I was like, I will not show up in with a cane in right. your wedding. Um, but yeah, we started dating shortly after that. And, uh, been good it's weird dating with like this sort of hanging over you mm -hmm. you have to ask them really serious questions early on like the kids question had to come up on like date two yeah um I think on date three I was like so if my arms ever stop working like 
would you wipe my butt? Like you have to ask really uncomfortable questions. And it's like, these are all things that we'll probably at some point have to ask our partners. Right. But like, not when you are like in your thirties, you know, right. not, you know, a few months and, and in. courting and like showing, right. you know, right. Like showing you your don't best even, self. Like, fart. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But I will fart, but can you wipe my ass? <laughs> that's exactly the phase we are in at seven months. That I would is say. Like, so that's the perfect funny. explanation. <laughs> Were you like actively seeking out a relationship? Was dating a priority for you when you met him? Um, so I had gone on the dating apps, but that was even more confusing because I'm like, do I just write it in my profile? Right. Like, hey. I'm terminal, but also <laughs> cute. Like, get at me. And so that, I made like, so you. You are also I, cute. I, I made I made a profile, and I just like I was getting like a lot of nice responses. I just really didn't know how to handle it, yeah. so I kind of just avoided. Like, I didn't want to have to tell a stranger on the first date about this stuff. Like, especially on dating apps, when you know you're like a swipe away from another option. I just was like not confident enough for it. Yeah. And so I kind of had given up on the idea of a relationship period. I was like, I guess, you know, that's just not really going to be part of my life. I have other things to focus on now. I have this purpose. And then Brian just came crawling in, you know? I'm obsessed. I know. He's a cutie. So all in all, like when you look back on the last few years and the journey you have ahead of you, like what, how, how do you describe it? Like what is your disposition? Like – I know you feel very compelled to like advocate and have more people know about ALS, but like on a personal level, like does the future scare you at all? So this is sort of a weird thing to try to explain because I, I don't think I could understand it unless I was given this diagnosis. But for me, like I do not picture a future and that sounds so sad, but it's honestly, I think it's my brain protecting me. Yeah. Like I honestly think we all have really protective brains because once I was diagnosed, those two to three months, I was thinking like, okay, so I'm not going to have kids. I'm probably not going to, you know, like be this corporate baddie that I thought I was going to be. Like all of that just kind of, I was grieving it. Yeah. But once I kind of got past that, I was like, I, now if anyone asked me like, oh, what are your plans, you know, for when you progress further? I'm like, couldn't tell you. Like I yeah. don't, my brain just doesn't want to go there. Um, and so... I don't really think about the future and I actually think it's made me a lot happier. Like it's, it's almost a relief in a sense. Cause you're like, I don't have to worry about everything I was worrying about before. Yeah. It's really just about like making sure I'm happy, making sure I feel good. And it's like, Claudia, if you don't break out into live like we were dying at one point during Dead. this, I, I feel live like, gonna... like you were dying. No, by the way, I feel like that's, actually a really healthy way of looking at things yeah. like that's definitely a defense mechanism for like your psyche to right. to protect you but i think that actually sounds really healthy and 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 gives you the ability to, to wake up every day positive and, and be happy yeah and and just take and i think that's what everyone does on some level like you're just trying to make it through one day at a time right like we all right. never I, know how how things are going to work out for us but if we can make it through today we'll be okay exactly well, we know you're a big pop culture girly, and, and you wanted to come on the toast, so we're gonna toast. We're gonna give you the toast yeah. treatment. We're gonna give you the I toast actually, treatment. I would like really wanted to learn as fast as you did the ending, but I couldn't do it. I, it's um, like truly a skill. No, the thing is, but you could you could practice and like you could do your own ending. Like when Claudia yeah. doesn't do it and I do it, like I kind of ad lib. So when we close, it's all you. It's oh gonna God! Be all oh, you. I should but never do said but do your own thing with it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe we'll get something like, that becomes part of fresh. the new ending. Something, something fresh. fresh. We love fresh. <laughs> okay, pop I'll culture wise. Bit. So, a lot going on in the universe right now. Kardashians, mm -hmm. like, kind of going through this unique period. What is, what is your take on the current state? Give us, like, a state of the union on the Kardashians right now. They could give us so much exposure in the ALS world. They're so famous. Yeah. They, yeah. And I think my next TikTok series is going to be, like, pitching celebrities on why they should donate to ALS mm -hmm. and I feel like Kylie would be a really easy one to do because like I already have the lip kits mm -hmm. I could just like talk like her talk you know sell yeah. her a little bit so I think that's going to be my next series is that you know like an issue in the ALS community like searching for a cure is it a lack of, of funds it, it's very underfunded mm. and it's crazy because like the ice bucket challenge raised 150 million dollars wow 
that helped fund like one medication. Wow. And so it's, it's not a matter of like them, you know, not knowing there's, there's a lot that needs to be done. Like we don't understand why people get it. We don't mm -hmm. understand why people progress faster with it than others. And so I think research money towards research is really what my focus has been in terms of funding. That's where I donate a lot of my money. Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel like the concept of it being underfunded, like needs to be more Spoken front and about. center. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that either. What other kinds of funding is there for ALS aside from like, uh, research, like, is there for medication? There's like buckets. Yeah, yeah. There's like, I would say there's like the cure bucket and that's like research and medications. And then there's like the care side of things right. where patients, you know, need like wheelchairs, they need adaptations, they need um, like feeding tube surgery, like basically with ALS, all of your muscles stop working. So like one by one, you become fully paralyzed. And that includes like, your lungs can stop, like your swallowing can stop, your speech is gone. So like everything is basically like machine, re relying on machines at mm -hmm. a certain point. And so the care bucket is really like making sure that patients have what they need. Yeah. Um, because I think like a lot of people, I mean, with any disability, like you're more likely to go into serious poverty. So that's the other bucket. And like, like I said, I, I feel really lucky that I'm still working. So I have the money to take care of that part for myself. Mm -hmm. So I focus on giving more money to research, but people have their preferences. Yeah. No, it gets expensive. Yeah. Our, you know, whole life in the last few months has revolved around Tom Sandoval and his insane yes. mustache and just yeah, horrible personality. Him. What is your take? Like, obviously, your team, Ariana, but you have any you have any thoughts on the situation? Any hot takes you want to share with the class? Yeah, a hot I, take, perhaps. I just can't get over. He keeps popping up on my TikTok. Like his band, yeah, <laughs> keeps popping up on my TikTok. The accent work he was doing, like he thinks that's a like he was home practicing accents in the mirror before yeah. these shows no he really it's thinks brutal. he's like elton john like that's the type of delusional person we're working with here yes like he thinks he's gonna be like a one namer in the future you Cher, know tom Madonna. exactly 100%. it's brutal like every time i'm like so ready to swipe away and then i'm like is he singing you know that 99 red balloon song yeah yeah, yeah. like full scottish accent as he's doing it it's so it's so painful to watch. He's so weird. I can't imagine like being in the front row as his girlfriend being like, that's my this man. Rocks. No, that's such a good point. Like yeah. imagine, <laughs> I could, that honestly could never be me. I, yeah, I guess you just get kind of like love sick, you know, yeah. where you just uh, feel like blindly supportive, but man, brutal. What about Succession? Are you watching Succession? It's like the worst show. Thank you. Thank you. Brooke. Of all time. I Brooke have watched everything. Brooke except us. Yeah, no, you can. I'm terminal. People can't come for me. <laughs> they that show is like it has had the same plot of every episode for like every single season. Yeah. yeah. And you think the finale like they'd be going out with a bang. Honestly, like the episode where Logan died mm -hmm. was like a nice change but then they went right they went right back to it in the following yeah. episode and it's like Ken, uh kendall yeah kendall's like back to being a little nutty yeah yeah it, the whole thing is just so painful to watch i can't i can't believe and you don't like tom and greg that's the only like thing that can kind Redeeming. of get me through it that's yeah. what a lot of people say but i see right through them i i like tom greg doesn't so much do it for me i also feel like greg like there were a bunch of blinds about him like yes. being super creepy in clubs and yes. that kind of like ruins the greg character by the way me. i completely Wait, I thought agree he was like so beloved he was and then like you know like ability head. is a prison mm -hmm. and there was um <laughs> all these blinds none of it is confirmed but like he's like being accused of being like really fucking weird oh i just like that. taking home a lot of girls and like talking about how he's on the show who knows if it's true like I mean, I, he's like a tall, cute guy. I don't, I feel like he doesn't need it, but yeah. Yeah, it just kind of ruins his character for me. But Tom still has me. I, Tom he's the only I, one I like. enjoyable at times, but also he gets on the hamster wheel of like not stopping talking about nothing. Yeah, he's tolerable sometimes. So, what other things were on your list? I actually, I got Shiv, I got Shiv too. 
You got the different like. hair with different no, hair. I don't see it. You're missing it. I I, I don't see it, see it either. No. I don't see a lot of them though. I, no. I feel like it's hard to see on it's yourself. It's hard to, see, but it's it, it is hard to see on yourself. Yes. Like so many people will tell me I look like someone. I'm like I really don't see it. But I guess if everybody says it, there's Roll something. Yeah. There. There's something. Shiv is a really weird character too. Like, I feel like every time they focus on her, she's making crazy eyes and they're playing scary music, and I'm like is this supposed to be deeper than I'm thinking it is? I don't understand. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not into the show. I'm really glad it's ending. Me too. <laughs> um, okay, we, can you walk me through some of the other things on your list? Like when, when you had to sit down mm. and be like, these are the things I would love to do. What is like, the yes. what are, name a few of them and then what's like the thing that you- Your number one Number thing. one. I think they're pretty equally weighted, honestly. But one of them was have um, a lunch with like, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, like that group of girls. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you have a lunch with them, like they'll get to know you and they'll like you and then you'll be friends forever. That's like always like what I get, think. Yeah, it's like the multiple wishes situation. Yeah, so yeah. that's... Right. And, and then it's I also, just the start of your friendship. I know, I know. But like I also was like they can bring whoever they want to. Course, like if course. they want to bring like Steve Carell or Kristen Wiig, like I am down. Yeah. Um. So that was one. The other is like having a sleepover with Taylor Swift... So she can tell me secrets. I honestly think like I could be a really good vessel for celebrity secrets because like for all they know, I could die tomorrow. <sighs> and so it's like, I, it, I want to yeah. know like what happened in that Beyonce elevator. Like I should be the one to know. No, and you deserve to know. I deserve it. I've earned this. Guys. Are you a really big Swifty? <laughs> um, I am. I am. Although I'm not going to the concert because well, one, I like didn't want to go through the hellscape of ticketing, but two, like in a wheelchair, I don't really know how that works. I imagine they have like sections. They do. I have actually but, like, heard the concert. People, I feel I feel bad. Like the people in front of me would feel bad standing. I no, think, by I the way, want so them to feel. No, you're totally fine. I've me. actually heard Taylor's concert is very ADA friendly, and most stadiums are. Like there are sections, and you're at the front of the section. Like you're 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 perched. That you actually have some of the best seats in the joint. Mm, okay, so I should have added that to my Make a Wish. I mean, although people are like, when I did that Make a Wish, I thought it was going to be a fun activity where everyone would write their Make a Wishes. Yeah, and instead, like people started tagging like. Taylor Nation, Taylor Nation, Claudia Oshry. I was like, oh God, this is like taking a turn for like actual make a wish. Like Good. I was thinking it would be, I was thinking it would be like a little fun activity Exercise. where I get to see like what people want to do. Have um, other people reached yeah. out? Like are other wishes going to come true? Um, so the one of them was hang out with the penguin, which like some of these I just put in like as to be like funny. Like one yeah. of them I wrote to have the friends cast call me their friend and people tagged Courtney Cox I'm like God, no well, you like, know what Courtney Cox is there. always thirsting out on TikTok I'm telling you she's gonna respond to you perhaps um yeah the penguin one a lot of people have been contacting zoos on my behalf and oh I'm like I God, probably could have done this one myself and so I just like didn't funny. put in the effort but well, I just yeah. think you're fabulous. I think you're just a gorgeous girly with such a great energy and such a beautiful smile. And I have loved chatting with you. And the fact that the toast in any tiny way has been a part of your journey makes me so happy. And mm. I just can't thank you enough for coming and chatting with us. Thank you so much. I've loved being here. A pleasure. Same. We loved having you. You guys make sure to follow Tik a uh, girl, your fucking TikTok username. What the fuck is that? Oh my God, we have to talk about it. So yeah, it's, I want to plug it and I can't even say it. Yeah, um, I didn't, like I said, when I started TikTok, I had like 10 followers and I was talking to myself most of the time. So I started, my symptoms started with a limp. And so, you know, the band Limp Bizkit? Of course, I get so the I, reference. I threw my name in the middle of it. So it's Limp Bruise Kit. But come to find out that Limp Bizkit is like a very filthy sex act. Did you know this? Oh, be right back. Hold on. Let me just only, let me get on Urban Dictionary. Only Hold like on. the men, only a certain percentage of men in my life have come forward to be like, you might want to think about changing it because well, it's, if I if I'm using, you know, it's not a common one. I right, would say. and like I mean, Limp Biscuit. The sounds band like, is so much more common. Oh right. my God! Do you want to read it out loud? Yes. <laughs> you Limp like, Biscuit. Use your judgment. According to Urban Dictionary. Oh wait. Oh my God. I'm literally getting a virus. Okay. Several guys stand in a circle around a biscuit. They all begin to jerk off, ejaculating onto the biscuit. <gasps> I'm not reading the last sentence. I'm not reading. Show it to oh, me. Oh, there's, wait, there's more. Oh, did they the last that? person to finish 
ejaculating has to eat the biscuit. Like, I based my, I based the (laughs) disability awareness campaign off of that. Listen, it is not too late to change your username. I know. Well, now TikTok just shows like Brooke Evie. Yes, so I feel yes. like it's fine. It's kind of hidden. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I really committed. <laughs> I tied a, what's the phrase? Like I tied my horse to the wrong Post race. or whatever. Yeah, that sounds she, right. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I get what you're saying. Well, yeah, it was if you, tough. If you're looking okay. for Brooke's TikTok, just search Brooke Evie, B-R-O-O-K-E space E-B-Y. Right? Yeah, that's perfect. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. <gasps> Toasters, follow Brooke. Send her love. Tell her beautiful celebrities she looks like. And keep doing the fabulous work that you're doing. It was such an honor to get to talk to you. Seriously, thank you for coming on. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for having oh, me. This is so, so surreal. This is oh, your time. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast. This is, do you still do Millennial Morning yes. Show? Yes. The Millennial Morning Show? Uh, we go live. Feel free to subscribe. We go live. And then it's like Stitcher's. Dreamcast podcast, right? You nailed it. Nailed something it. about w- wickedly talented. Oh. Like that, that is my favorite pop culture moment in history is Same. wickedly talented. I say it all the time. I said it in one of my TikToks and people started commenting like, I knew you were a toaster. And I was like, oh my God. There's something about like the W, wicked, like the wind up, wickedly and talented. It's like, it's, it's like he added an H after the W. It's like wickedly Yes, talented. it's like a whistle. Wickedly There's something talented. so strange about that whole thing. Like that's no. another secret I want to get in. <laughs> yeah, on. by the way, because there was something going on that day. Yeah. I mean, there's something going on with John Travolta, period. All the like, time. I need to know. It all. Add it to the list. Add it to the list of secrets. <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. Well, you guys, make sure to follow Brooke. Thank you so much for joining us. And you guys, we'll see you on tomorrow's episode. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.